Hi, the purpose of the talk today is going to be to provide a brief introduction about student development, to give an overview of a foundation of student developmental theory, and to discuss ways that student development can inform our practice. So student development, let's, let's talk about this a little bit. What is meant by student development and how can it actually help educators in their work? How can we increase our understanding of student behaviors and decisions? And this last one is important. Uh, many times educators want to know how can we use this information to help students that are moving along a path that maybe is not as successful as we'd like them. So let's look at these three questions and see if we can come up with some answers. Understanding student development is crucial in being an effective practitioner. Facilitating students' growth and development is really a central goal of education, K-12 through higher education. And all of us, faculty, staff, uh, everyone that comes in contact with students, we all play an integral role in achieving that goal. And these concepts can be used as a guide in our practice. So during this time on campus, what can students do, what should they be doing, and what should we expect should be happening? What does a developed student do or not do? So when you reflect on these questions, uh, or when you reflect on this question, what sort of descriptors may come to mind? Maybe some adjectives like mature, attentive to their studies, they meet their deadlines, or they have few or no inter or intrapersonal challenges to distract them from their academics. When challenges do arise, a developed student can navigate them efficiently. Right? That sounds reasonable. Would you consider the absence of any of these challenges to be an indication that a student is on the right developmental path? So in student development, let's consider some common definitions that are seminal in the field. Give you some background on how we would define that. Nevitt Sanford really distinguished growth um, and development from change, mainly because change is an altered condition and change can be positive or negative, whereas development is generally thought of as positive growth. This definition by Rogers also looks at growth, progress, and developmental capacities in a higher education context. This definition by Miller and Price looks at, again, a post-secondary context in, types of, in terms of the types of skills and uh, behaviors that a student should accomplish by the time they finish. And this definition by Rogers captures that idea about um, adolescent and adult development as they move through college. These theories tend to identify the specific aspects of development that examine factors that influence their occurrence. Developmental theory should answer and respond to these four questions. The first one, what interpersonal and intrapersonal changes occur while the student is in college? What factors lead to this development? What aspects of the college environment encourage or retard growth? And what developmental outcomes should we strive to achieve in college? A foundational theory uh, in the area of college student development was developed by Chickering and revised again by Chickering and Reiser. And they established identity as a, an essential goal, as a critical uh, state that students grapple with as they move through their college years. The establishment of identity allows the person to successfully address issues that may arise later in their developmental process. And development occurs through the resolution of developmental tasks that characterize each vector. So they, uh, Chickering and Riser identified a series of developmental issues, and we'll talk about those in a little bit more detail shortly, but mainly um, they involve developing competence, managing emotions, and they describe things that college students would be experiencing. These seven vectors um, actually form the student's identity. Um, he used the term vectors of development because they seem to have a direction and a magnitude, even though the progression is not necessarily linear, and we'll touch on that again shortly. Also, it's good to keep in mind that students can move through these vectors um, 
at different times, they may recycle back through and revisit an issue that they've previously examined. And students also move through these vectors at different rates. So let's examine each one of these a little bit more closely.